Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about MOSFET current voltage characteristics. Our goals for this video are first to plot the current voltage characteristics of the MOSFET device. On that plot, we want to identify the different modes of operation. And finally, we're going to revisit the idea of channel length and pinch off to account for a phenomenon known as channel length modulation. Over here on the left, we have the in-channel MOSFET, or the NMOS for short. We know that when we put a voltage here at the gate, it induces a channel that causes a continuous path for current to flow from drain to source. However, we also know that as we increase the value of the drain voltage, the shape of this channel changes from being rectangular to trapezoidal and finally to a triangular shape with pinch off. Those ideas led to different equations for drain current. First, in the simplest version of the equation, we have zero current if there's no channel. That makes sense. This is a mode we call cutoff. As we increase the value of VGS and we create a channel, the first mode we enter is a mode that we call triode. However, when we add a little bit more voltage at drain to source, we find that this channel is no longer trapezoidal in shape and is all of a sudden triangular and has a pinch off point right here at the drain. And the point when that happens is when VDS is exactly equal to the over voltage. And if we plug that into this triode equation, we come up with a new equation for saturation. Now what does this tell us about the characteristic IV curve of a MOSFET? What it tells us is that on the plot, there's going to be different regions for the different modes of operation. Down here in the bottom left, we have a circuit with the NMOS circuit symbol. This is of course a slightly more complicated version of the MOSFET circuit symbol because we're including the body connection. Most of the time we can omit this body connection as it's connected to the source. For the purposes of plotting the IV curve, what we're going to consider is that we're stepping the value of VGS and we're sweeping the value of VDS. In the simplest case, let's consider what happens when the value of VGS is not larger than the threshold voltage. Well, as we can see from this condition right here, if the value of VGS is less than the threshold voltage, we are in cutoff and the current will be zero. We'll start at the origin and go down the horizontal axis. Now, when our value of VGS rises above the threshold voltage, we're no longer in cutoff. Rather, we're gonna be in one of two modes, either triode or saturation. If the value of VDS is relatively small compared to the value of VGS, as it would be on the left side of the curve, then we're going to be in triode mode. We can see from this equation that this equation starts out fairly linear, but then quickly has a square term that starts reducing the value. So therefore, the shape of the curve will start out a little bit linear, but then slowly decrease in slope. At some point, we're going to find that the value of VDS has exceeded the value of the over voltage, in which case we move from triode mode into saturation mode. And when that happens, we can see from the equation that this equation is no longer dependent on our independent variable VDS. Well, that means that we have saturated or that our curve is going to flatten out. What happens if we have a larger value of VGS? The characteristic will look very similar. However, it will increase farther before it goes from triode into saturation mode. It will follow higher, and then it will go into saturation mode. And we can do this for all sorts of different values of VGS. To be clear, what we're saying is that this curve is VGS at some value. We'll call it VGS1. This next curve up has a VGS we'll call VGS2, but that value is greater than VGS1. And once again, the third curve up, we'll call it VGS3, is greater than VGS2. We can't forget about the very first line that we drew. That was when VGS was less than the threshold voltage. We'll call that VGS0. And this plot is very characteristic of any transistor. But one thing that we want to do is identify the different areas or modes of operation in this characteristic curve. Looking very carefully, we can see maybe somewhere right around here, we went from triode into saturation. 
again in this next curve, maybe that would happened right there. And in the next curve, maybe that happened about right there. And if we drew a whole bunch of curves in here, and we identified the point where we went from triode into saturation, we'd find that we have a curve that increases by the square. Where on the left side of that curve, we're in triode, and on the right side of that curve, we're in saturation. In the previous IV characteristic, we considered the case whenever we're sweeping the value of VDS with various stepped or fixed values of VGS. What happens if we consider sweeping the value of VGS with a fixed value of VDS? Well, in this case, we can expect that the curve will look a little different. We will still go through the different modes of operation, but the question is exactly in what order and what does the shape of the curve look like? The first thing to consider is when the value of VGS is very small. And we can see over here under our conditions that when the value of VGS is small, in fact, if it's below the threshold voltage, we'll be in cutoff mode and the current will be zero. So the first thing to label on our graph is the position of the threshold voltage. And since we're in cutoff mode, we know that from the origin all the way up to that threshold voltage, our current will be zero. Now once our value of VGS has exceeded the value of the threshold voltage, the next thing to consider is whether we're in triode mode or in saturation mode. Well, since the value of the overvoltage is a function of the independent variable, VGS, the voltage that we're sweeping, in fact, it's VGS minus the threshold voltage, and since we've just barely overcome the threshold voltage, the value of VOV will be very small. Therefore, we can't expect the value of VOV to be larger than VDS at this point. We can, however, expect that it will be smaller, in which case we're actually in saturation mode. And we can see over here from the saturation mode equation that the current will go up by a square. Therefore, the shape of the curve on the right side of the threshold voltage will go up by a square. At some point, we will exceed the value of VDS with the overvoltage value and we'll move from saturation into triode. And if we look very carefully at this equation for triode, we're going to see that this term, KNVOV VDS, if we distribute the VDS in, is actually linear. Therefore, once we reach that point, we'll find that no longer does our equation go up by a square, it increases linearly. In a previous video, we took a look at how the shape of the channel goes from trapezoidal into triangular, and how that leads to the different modes of operation, triode mode into saturation mode. But where we stopped was, we only considered the point when the value of VDS is exactly equal to VOV. What happens if the value of VDS exceeds the value of VOV? Using this model that we had from a previous time, we can see that if we have a larger value of VDS, then the shape of our curve will go up. Let's pay particular attention to the fact that what just happened was our effective length of our channel changed. In fact, we moved over by some value delta L. And so now the total length of our channel, or the effective length of our channel, is now L minus delta L. In fact, we can see that as we change the circuit with different values of VDS, this channel length modulation will be more or less depending on the value of VDS. So it could be that it's very small, or it could be that it increases. So the question is, how does this affect the equation that we came up with for drain current in saturation mode? It turns out there's a very simple way of looking at this change. All we have to do is add an extra term over here on the right side of the equation. That extra term will be 1 plus a value lambda, which we'll call the channel length modulation parameter, times the value of VDS. If we think about this very carefully, and we took this regular term for saturation that we had from before, and we distributed that into this new, this new modification, we're going to find that we're going to have a term that is the saturation term that we had before, and another term that has this lambda parameter, but is now also dependent on the value of VDS. What this means is, we have a term in our equation that is now dependent on this lambda parameter. 
In fact, it's linearly dependent on this lambda parameter, and that will change the shapes of our curves in a very distinctive way. In fact, what it will do is instead of going flat here, we're instead going to be increasing. Every curve will do this. It turns out there's one very unique idea about this channel length modulation. And that idea is that if we were to extend this line all the way out to where it hits the x-axis, we would find that it would, they would all hit nearly the exact same point. And that point is called the early voltage point. And it turns out that our parameter lambda, which we call the channel length modulation parameter, is equal to 1 over the absolute value of that early voltage. We'll call that V sub A. And that concludes this video of Unwired Learning.